hi guys you guys are welcome back to this video in this video we'll be talking about forms right forms 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 and right, let's get started in our usual tradition we'll create a new file we'll call it forms.html .html and let's close this other two we don't need them anymore doc pop this stuff up and we'll just see forms here now i'm not going to create h3 tag here and just call it what forms right let's just call it forms and I'll probably type HTML in front, forms, and let's try to run this. And um, as it here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to say open with, I'll say Google Chrome, and I'll say forms. Perfect. So let's create our forms. Now, the first part of forms, in fact, I can actually divide forms into three parts, but let me start with the first part. Now, the first part of forms is where you create your form, right? So let's create our first form. So in this form, um let's call this one um the first thing we want to learn is the form tag so you want to create a form you want to enclose it to the form tag now the form tag has like two major attributes right that people use for example you could see vs colors automatically give me this action attribute so the action attributes is asking us for the file location where the form needs to be handled right and we have another second major attribute of the form tag which is the method attribute the method attribute is asking for the http protocol HTTP stands for hypertext transfer protocol right so the http method that um we are going to use to handle this form in most cases it usually is to be get or post right get or post are like one of the most um widely used way to handle forms right but in this uh i'm saying we don't necessarily need all of this stuff right so it's because we're not necessarily handling this form, we're just basically creating it. So that being said, the next thing I want to talk about is a special type of form that is called input. So we'll go through them one after the other, right? So I'm going to create like a paragraph tag for each and every one of it, right? So the first type that we're going to go through is the text. So I'm just going to type text here and I'm going to call in input. So and the input is an example of empty element tag right when i was about empty element tag that are, that are self-closing tags that do not carry anything so i can actually add a forward slash here or even leave it html will forgive me but i normally love to add a particular forward slash to ensure that i'm doing the right thing so i can i can save this now so if i save this what is making it text because i'm saying okay this type attribute it should be text so this attribute called type is what that is making it text actually and i really love that so i would go ahead and run this and refresh my file and see Boop. so we have that there you see text so text is ideal so now people cannot type stuff right so text is ideal when you're creating a form that has to do a form that has to do with like um um uh, um name you want to collect name from people you know those form you fill online now name email address phone number you hit on submit button and so on and so forth that is what we're trying to create here right and um and um we should do this so if i have input here there's another attribute to go add it's called placeholder so placeholder are text that appear inside the input element and will disappear immediately user start typing so let's try um a simple placeholder right here so the first placeholder that i would actually want us to try like right now is the placeholder that i call um, let us say eg john eg john all right or uh, uh, okay let's say enter your name Hmm, let's use that one. Enter your name. So I'm going to save this. So if I put enter your name here, we're going to have something like this, right? You see? Enter your name. So it looks it looks cool. The moment I start typing, it basically disappears. Now there's another form tag that you see that is widely used. It's called the label tag. And um, usually it's always like this. But this is where people like put in the label. So I'll put it like this label. Let's remove the four attributes. You don't need to know that now. And let's just call this one, for example, name. Let's say his name that I want to collect. Then we can say EG John as placeholder. We can say EG John coming. I don't know how to spell John in here. Let me just give a line break here so that this stuff will look like this. So if I refresh and I have name, EG John and I start typing and everything basically just works fine. So now the next thing I want to try is um, other input type. For example, we have other input types like email address, phone number. In fact, we're going to try everything. So for email, let me type email here and also type email, email address, 
just for the sake of it and say egjohn at gmail.com and the type now the difference between just basically changing the type to email and that's all and we have him email here so but you're not going to see any difference though but yeah later on when we start doing talking about form validation you're going to see like difference so but let's just keep going on so i'll copy this i'll paste it again and after i don't talk about is tell so tell is another input type and tell is ideal for um and phone phone number let's say you want to collect like phone number from somebody from your audience or your users so this is where you enter eg let me say um zero eight one two 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 four 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 okay i'm just typing anything i'm gonna call that number i don't know who owns the number all right so basically that's our phone number over there and people can actually start to type their phone number and stuff like that and it's actually cool people can add plus to be easy plus two three four zero blah 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 blah, blah. And all those all those things that phone number can should contain right so tell is for phone number then um we have another amazing stuff again that you could try that is still part of input another one that you could try is date so this allow us to add like date of birth no this kind of stuff date of birth and um let's just call this one dates right so yeah we don't need a placeholder for this let's take away the placeholder and let's see what we have so we have stuff like this right and um, you can basically just click this and this kind of stuff will come up and you can select a particular date right so this is this is really really cool so um um what other stuff again we have so let's keep trying um you see all of this stuff i'm just changing the value of the input right that's the that's the only thing i'm doing here right so we have um color picker so this is another amazing um, um color picker form as well that we could use so uh, i will call this um i'll call it color and i will say um your best color let's just type your best color here your best color all right so we have that you rule to like select several color pickers and so on and so forth so just just simple thing and everything just appears like magic right so apart from color picker too let's try something else let's try different values right of input so we have checkbox too you see yes but it won't give you like details so now the next round okay let's try password Ooh, i didn't talk about password so password is very important so let's talk about password no worry we'll go through everything after the other so let's say enter your password enter your password so the moment you make it password this is what happens let me go back and refresh when we make it this is what happens it becomes like in this password way right which is if you ask me i think it's pretty cool and um it's something that is amazing and it's something that is nice as well so you can enter your password in there so once you have your password there the next thing that you could have let's see um there's another one called numbers so numbers allow you to select just numbers right so let's say numbers let's say your age so this is ideal when you want to collect like age or something that has to do with numbers right so somebody will not be able to type if you type if you try to type text now it will not work only numbers you can actually type and of course you can reduce it you can increase it here or you can reduce it here so that is you basically using um the numbers right so input type numbers input type password a lot of stuff so let's keep trying so there's another one if you want to like upload image you use file so this file can for image can be for um, um documents anything that has to do with upload right so the type is called file right so let's call this one file let's call this one uh, profile image or something so, but this might not be this might even be document let's say you have been an application and there's a kyc onboarding process everybody they need to upload probably their international passport or something of that nature you can use file to get them to upload any document their cvs or stuff like that so for file you see choose file you want to click this and it will prompt you to upload stuff and you can easily like just go around your system and probably look for a certain image and say, oops see that image is there then copy two and you can upload that particular thing so file basically help us to upload input type file and enable us to upload so let's see what other type again we have down here and um if we come here this code will give us so we have different we've tried all of this you can go ahead and basically 
try some of these things out so i think i'm going to talk about some couple more but i think that is really really important so let me talk about range so range is good so range is you see many e-commerce sites using it as price range right so let me call this range and i will call this price range price range all right save and i'll refresh this and you could see like several price range you can select minimum you can add minimum there are other things you could do though other form of validation that you could do like you can say minimum number maximum number of the range and so on and so forth right it depends on what you're trying to say you can say maximum um 20 30 there about and uh 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 so that's the maximum or something of that nature anyways so but let me just um take this off for now and we'll talk about that one later then um um so that's price range so let's talk about another thing and the another type of input form i want to talk about is another type is the radio so the radio input allow us to not this gender kind of thing everybody have to select if you're a male or a female stuff right if you're a male or female like you know those kind of the other way you have like multiple options one answer so the radio button allow us to do that so how do we do that i will come over here i will say i will say radio um okay yeah, of course i'll say radio so we call it radio and i will say gender let's call this one yeah let's say gender here and um um let's say this one is male right so i'll call this the type now is going to be radio so let me just copy this again and paste it and call the second one female right all right so i'll refresh this and we have something like this so we have this radio button now male and female but the back now is that you see both of them are selected but you know how it works on this on the website that you normally visit it's such a way that once one is selected you want to select the second one that other first one will be deselected so how do we do that right so i will explain how we do that now how we do that is by introducing another attribute called name attribute and the name attribute the value of the name attribute must be equal on both of them right so if i give this one let us give it sex for example Let's say name is equal to sex, and I'll copy this, and I'll come over here, and I'm going to say name is equal to sex again. So as long as it's the same name, that particular um, um, functionality will be activated, and now I should be able to just click only one, select only one, one answer. The moment I select the other one, the other one get um, become um, deselected. But if this stuff is not the same, let's say it's not spelled the same way, add as x the second one, it will still not work. Which simply means to get it to, to work, right? Name must be equal to the same exact value. This this sex could be anything, could be anything that you like. Um, it could be anything actually, right? Anything that you want to give it, even if it is triple S, you give it two S here. You want to come and give it two S here. As long as it's the same thing, right? It's definitely going to work, right? So just for clarity, more clarity purpose, let's just give it um sex or gender. Let me call it gender. Let me just call it gender and it will still work as well so that is how we create this stuff using the video button now another thing again that we will also create is the is the checkbox so checkbox allow us to have like multiple options and multiple answers right so i call the video button to be multiple answers um multiple answers multiple options one answer why checkbox is multiple answers multiple options multiple answers so let's call this one checkbox so checkbox is another one checkbox sort of radio now let's call it checkbox all right let's just say courses let us assume that okay i want them to be able to feel like which courses at this particular point in time i don't really need their name so let me just call this one um let's call this one html bring it down let's call this one css and um we'll call, we'll create this one checkbox we don't need this anymore pass it so i can repeat let's just repeat it three times and uh, let me give this one javascript javascript all right see so with this now we could have like several check boxes and we could select it like this like this uncheck it if we want to and that is how um you work with checkbox right which is another super amazing uh, um feature as well right all everything still on that us talking about um, um input if you notice we've not treated anything about form apart from the form tag itself 
the label tag and input and the only thing i just changing is the type right so we have type just to recap we have text we have email we have tell we have dates we have color we have password we have numbers we have file we have range we have radio we have checkbox right so several inputs so let's check another one so another input i want to talk about it looks like a button but it's called reset so let's see how that one works right so that one is reset so i'm just going to create a simple button and i'm going to say inputs like this and um, this stuff is going to be um type is going to be what reset right so if it is reset we can add the value to it and say clear form so this this could be anything actually you just call it clear form right um I'm going to roll this now so if i select this now now watch what this reset does this clear form is because that's what I included into this particular attribute called value, right? But what it's making is reset, it's resetting the form. So if you have actually filled the form with some series of information, I'm just typing anything I like. You fill the form with some series of information and you want to basically clear the form, right? You, all you just need to do is to click on reset and all this information that I feel right now will disappear. Boop. I've cleared that particular form. So that's what the reset input does. So and it's like a button too. So there's another button that we we'll normally use, which is called um, the submit. So submit button allow us to submit the form. So let me just duplicate this and paste it and say type submit and let's say submit form, right? Or let's just call this one submit. Submit form. Anything in here will definitely work, right? So submit form so this will allow us to submit the form now but if we want to submit the form it's looking for that particular area in such a way that let's say in our form here we give it an action and the action that we give it is probably so let's say like this basic.html so now once we click on submit it will redirect to basic.html to try to submit that particular form this will me once i fill this stuff and i click on submit it will go to basic this is my first paragraph remember that basic rotation file that we created previously right that is what action does where should that particular form be submitted right so um so that's how we handle submit as well so the next thing um on that aspect of forms that i would love to talk about since we've been talking about input 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 all everything i've been discussing about since is input right i also want to use this opportunity to talk about buttons so there's a tag in html that is called buttons right so what are button tags so we enable us to create buttons so using the button tag open and close you can create several kind of button but there's another kind of button you can create that is called type submit so so button have the regular button we have menu we have reset and we have submit so this particular one i want to create now is the submit button right which does the same thing as the input tag and submit as well right so if i click submit here it's basically going to submit the form so the imp this one with input and the regular button basically work like they all looks like button actually depending on how you want to create that particular button and if i fill this form and i click on submit it's definitely going to submit that particular form for me right which is the same thing now that being said let's talk about another thing the next thing i would love us to talk about will be select so how do we handle select now select allows us to have like multiple options one answer just like radio but now can i like several options and it's going to come in a drop down format so for us to create select let me just create a paragraph here let me create uh let me just say select just for emphasis sake and give it a br there and okay let's start creating the select itself now so select is like this uh i don't really need, need name an id attribute for now so select have like options so we have like options here and the option can have value so let us say choose your preferred course and i could have it like this i can have like several options like this now and i can say okay let the first one be html i'll duplicate it let this one be javascript and let this one be css all right i'll save this and if i come back and i refresh so we're going to have like all of this stuff i have html css javascript cool right so that is how you basically work with select and i think this is really amazing because you have like html you have css and you have 
JavaScript and you could definitely choose your preferred course, right? So that is how you work with CNS. So the last, probably the last thing I would love to talk about before I round up with the form um, uh, module of, of different types of form that we could create would be what I love to create, which would be text area. So this particular one, I love to call it text area, right? So that's the name, text area. Oops. See, it has automatically created it for me with name. <laughs> yeah, this stuff is cool. So I'll explain this stuff. We don't need ID, but of course, we need columns and rows. I'll explain this. So you can even have like a placeholder. I can say type your message here. And if I save this, this is just like the tag is text area open and text area close. So if I save this and I go back here and I refresh and you have this here, so you can actually type in, type your messages, so you should be able to see several stuff, right? So you should be able to see several stuff. So um, this allows you to type like more images, more text and so on and so forth, which is like super great. And um, I think it's cool. You should just basically try it out. There's no big deal there. Just try it out. No big deal. All right, so that's text area for you. Then um, the row span and the column span actually control the size of the text area, right? So for example, now for column, it controls the width, I believe. So if I increase this to 300 now, if I refresh this, it's going to be like, ooh, so wide. So 300 is like too much, right? Let's just make it 50. So these columns control the width and this row, let's say this one is 10, if I make it five, if I make it five, it should be smaller now in terms of height. So this row columns control the width and rows controls the height, right? So that's what that particular two stuffs. That's what they do there. Now this here are some input and um, form tags that will allow you to create any kind of form you see out there on the web, and they are pretty amazing. So this is one aspect of form that you actually want to be aware of. Now that being said. I want us to jump into the second part of form. I said form is like three parts. The first part of this form is where, let me drop the text here. The first part of this form is where we are talking about um, creating of form elements. So let me just type it here. Creating of form elements, right? Let me say part, let me just say part one. Creating of form elements. So part two, if you ask me, Will be what validation but i'm not going to make it like really really bulky so validation like validating so let's say validation so now how do you basically validate forms right so we have like three parts i'm going to talk about the third one so it's such a way that if somebody did not fill in something it should throw up an error that okay look you, you left this particular field blank right so that's using javascript or any of those stuff there are easy ways you could actually do it inside of html that is like pretty cool and um, I'll, I'll delete so many things here. I'll delete so many things here. And uh, okay, let me just leave some few things coming. I just copied the previous form and pasted it. So I'll delete some things. And uh, let me delete so many things I might not need to validate right now. Let me just leave like, let me leave name, email, and password. Oops, I've deleted the password so as well. No problem. Let me delete the select as well. I'll delete the text areas as well. And um, let me delete so that. Let me just do just only one submit. Okay. Okay, let me just add one more, which is going to be password. All right, password. All right, that's it. So I'm going to type password here and yeah, let us see your password. So let's see how we can validate these particular forms. And it's just only one thing I'm going to add. It's going to be like a shortcut to you guys, right? So I'll delete this. All right, so I have passport. No, this is it now. Aha. So part two, form validation. In fact, let's make let's make this stuff really big. Where's that part two thing? Instead of paragraph, let's make it like H1, so it's going to be big and bold. All right, I think making it big and bold. Yeah, part two, validation. Part one, creating a form element. Yeah, 
So part two validation. So let's see how we can play. Such a way that we will not be able to submit this particular stuff until, for example, if I click on submit, oops, I can submit it, right? The form has been submitted. So I don't want to, be able to submit it if this if this field are empty. So it's just one word you're going to add to this particular form element, and that word is called what required. All you just have to do is to say required. Type in required here and required here, and let's where is that password again? And also type required here so the moment you do that right the moment you do that if we try to submit this form it's going to say please fill in this field and let's say i enter my name and i click on submit again say please in fill in this field i enter my name again and i say tell me, please include art in that email address someone is missing art okay if i include art and i try to submit it's going to say please enter the following art someone is incomplete in, in other words telling me that this is not an this is an incorrect email address but if I add like gmail.com now, you could see that HTML is already doing the validation for me. And if I just say, please fill in this field. Once I enter this field now, then the form can be submitted, right? So that is validation for you, for us guys. And we can even say, okay, the minimum password that you can enter, see, minimum length that you can enter is six. So let's see how that validation will work. Let me refresh this. I will fill in this field. Some more, I'll enter some more at gmail.com. I say, okay, please enter this field. I enter like two, three stories. So please lengthen this text to six characters or more. And that's because I say minimum length is six characters, right? That means my password must be greater than six characters, right? If not, this form is not going to be what submitted. And but if I do it more than six characters, I should be able to submit. So that is form validation for us. So for you to validate your form, all you just need to do is just include this particular keyword inside the input element. Even if it is a select, just in, in, include the keyword required, and you should be able to validate your form. Now, the next thing I want us to talk about, right? Let me copy this and paste it again. Part three of forms. A lot of us to talk about is prefill. Let me use the word prefill, right? You know when you like try to edit your previous form, let's say you sign up on, an, on a particular website or app and you want to edit your profile, you will see your previous name there and stuff like that. So how do you prefill a certain form? So I'll just copy this form here, Control C, I'll come here, Control V and paste it. So I want to like prefill this information, right? So the part one we spoke about creating a form element, part two we spoke, we spoke about validation. And part three, we want to talk about the filling of data, right? Such a way that I can add like an existing information instead of this form the moment you load that particular form. Now, the moment I load this particular page, you could see that this stuff is empty, but I want to fill it with some Linus, which is my name. So what I'm going to do now is under this particular form here, name, I will come here and I will add another attribute. Another attribute is called value, right? And if I add value, I can say, um, I want the words which should be there should be what Samuel. Linus, right by default, and and so there's no need to be filling password access up because of that. I'm not going to add the field to password, so I'm going to say by default, I want this one to have like someone at gmail that this is not my email address though, someone at gmail.com or as domain.com. So if I do this now, you'll be able to have like someone Linus and someone at gmail.com once you load that particular page which is prefilling so another thing again i also want to add is that sometimes you want to create a particular form element i don't want people to, should to be able to edit it right so you can use disabled so disabled will make it for people not to be able to like edit it so it will be disabled you see i cannot do that or there is read only mode read only you can put it that as well that will allow people just it's not be disabled but it will be read only and they will not be able to type stuff as well there now before we call it to an end to this particular video i also want to like use how do we pre-fill or pre-select uh, stuff like this um, um um radio buttons check buttons and also text area buttons and even selected buttons as well so let's see how we could do that so i don't i don't want to recreate this form so i'll just compress this and open this and go back to this format one and i'll look for the radio button right okay let's start with the radio button so for us to like pre-select a certain radio button or check the mail gender or we, have to, we don't create value here we we'll just say check so the word for this one is check so the moment you say check and you come here and refresh 
is that male is checked by default. And if you want female to be checked by default, you go to the female one, you also include the word check there. And once you refresh, female will be checked by default. So that is how you do the prefix for radio buttons. So same thing as well apply for, let's say I want CSS to be checked by default. Same thing I apply here too. I just need to type check there and CSS will be checked by default. So of course it can be unchecked, but by default it will be checked. For example, I want um, JavaScript to be selected by default. I would go to under the select area here under JavaScript. I'm just going to type a word called selected, not checked now. Selected and it's be JavaScript will be selected by default. Now for text area as well, you don't use like value to prefill it. All you just need to do is to type your actual, actual, actual prefill message comes in here. All right, let me just type this and save. So you could actually do this. Your actual prefill message comes in here. So this is it, right? So that's how you prefill text here, especially if you reload it and you do that. So, so guys, this is it. This is forms instead of HTML. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask me. If you are confused, something you're not clear about something, hit me up, ask me a question, and I will endeavor to actually answer your question so thank you guys for watching this particular video if you have not subscribed to the youtube channel don't forget to subscribe and um, look out for the next video bye